Honourable Member for Fulcrum. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to support the motion and to pray honourable members to also support the motion. Speaker, I'm referring to page five of your committee's report, and I'm particularly excited by the recommendation to make consultation with stakeholders mandatory. I think that making it mandatory gives material meaning to the constitutional provision to Article 35.6D, and if you're with your permission, I would like to read, to make democracy a reality by decentralizing administrative and financial machinery of government to the regions and districts, and by affording all possible opportunities to the people to participate in decision-making at every level in national life and in government. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm dwelling on this point because whenever we have talked about consultation, in practice, in most cases, consultation has been, mere, has been uh, a mere symbolic gesture. In mo many of project documents and policy documents, when uh, formulators have, co have been called upon to consult stakeholders. They merely gather people and, uh, if you like, inform them without meaningfully creating space for them to, if you like, influence uh, the decisions that are taken. And this is particularly important because this bill is seeking to create a law to, if you like, bring development to a region that has a certain cultural contest that has to uh, uh, that has to be borne in mind, especially the powerful uh, roles that chiefs and opinion leaders play. And in many of these consultation processes, you will find that when uh, people want to be uh, fast, they just gather uh, chiefs or opinion leaders tell them what they want to do, and they call that consultation. And that is just a, a mere symbolic uh, gesture. I think in the spirit of the provision that I've read, if we really need substantive consultation, then we need to be able to develop further guidelines uh, to make sure that we create a mechanism where the consultation process will be responsive and will be accountable. I believe when we are able to do this, we will achieve the bottom-up approach that uh, we want to uh, use to bring development to our people. And at the end of the day, we'll be able, the governance landscape will be good for us to achieve the purpose for which this bill uh, is being passed. With these few words, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. I rise to support the motion to approve uh, 347 million 344,233 Ghana cities for the services of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources for the year 2018. In supporting the motion, I'd like to dwell on one important point captured in your committee's report on page nine, which deals with the issue of managing forest resources in Ghana. Mr. Speaker, I choose to dwell on this because um, we are all aware of the alarming rate at which Ghana is losing our natural forests. And 
our commitment to the implementation of the sustainable uh, development goals, particularly the SDG 50, which enjoins countries that have subscribed to implement sustainable management, uh, promote the implementation of sustainable management of all types of forests. Mr. Speaker, as a country, we also have made commitments both in our national forest and wildlife policy and also in our coordinated program for economic and social development to plant between 20,000 and 25,000 hectares of forest a year. With that commitment in mind, I find it interesting that the ministry has been bold to set a target of 30, planting 30,000 hectares of forest in 2018, meaning that the ministry is actually uh, going beyond even the targets that have been set in national uh, policy documents. And in that respect, I believe that we ought to commend government for that bold decision to undertake a vigorous plantation program uh, in the coming year. Especially because, Mr. Speaker, over the years since 2002 to date, our annual plantation uh, cover has been uh, around 13,000. And therefore, to jump from 13,000 to 30,000 it's indeed a bold decision that the government has taken. And I could agree with my ranking uh, uh, that this is indeed an ambitious project. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, for us to be able to encourage the ministry to commit resources to implementing uh, this goal, we need to be able to um, bring in perspective the importance of Ghana committing ourselves to planting 30,000 hectares of forest uh, uh, in, the, in the year 2018. First of all, Mr. Speaker, we all know that Ghana is among the countries with the highest rate of deforestation. Uh, in fact, um, we are said to be losing some 65,000 hectares of our forest every year. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, until we are able to recover the forest resources that we are losing uh, in the near future, uh, as said in our um, coordinated program for economic and social development policy, we, if we continue to lose our forests at this rate, Ghana is likely to lose our natural forest by the year 2040. And therefore, it is important that we pay attention to forest plantation. And that is why we are all in support of government's commitment to undertake this uh, important project. Mr. Speaker, undertaking uh, this project will boost the sustainable levels of forest that can help us meet our domestic and export uh, timber needs. And by able to plant 30,000 hectares, the estimate is that we will be able to move our forest plantation, uh, timber supply from our forest plantation from 3.4 million to 6.65 million cubic meters. And Mr. Speaker, this alone will be able to supply 66% of our domestic and overland timber needs from plantations alone. The other reason why it is important that we commit ourselves to implementing this project is that we will be able to raise the net present value of plantation timber from the current $130 million dollars to $365 million. So even though the cost of executing this project may seem to be very high, 
Mr. Speaker, if you look at the returns that this country will gain now and in the near future, we must be able to commit ourselves to implementing uh, this project. And no, no, as no, no, captured, no, no, no. I'm winding up, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, finally, let me say that um, the, we have not even talked about the environmental and the ecosystem services that such a plantation cover will, um, will provide for this country. And therefore, while supporting the motion, I would like to urge the ministry to ensure that they are also committed and that all available opportunities to be able to raise additional funding to support such a project should be undertaken so that at the end of the day, Ghana will come to the level of sustainable production of forests. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for your indulgence. Uh, delivery system. And so, commending her, I'd like to also urge honorable members to also commit some of our funds to help educate the public, especially those in our schools, of the need to appreciate that mental health is a challenge in this country and that uh, the, it is important that we seek uh, care and also to more or less provide some support. Mr. Speaker, I am supporting uh, parents with children who are suffering from autism, and I will urge my colleagues to go to the extent of fishing out or looking for parents who might have uh, children suffering from such disabilities so that we can extend some form of assistance to them. Indeed, these uh, conditions are very expensive to uh, cure. If, for example, the average child who is re receiving therapy in any center treating autism pay not less than 3,000 Ghana cities. And if you look at the levels of uh, salaries that uh, people take in this country, you may appreciate that most Ghanaians will not be able to afford uh, such therapies. And that is why these children are mostly left uh, uncared for. And so, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank you very much um, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Honourable Member for Farukou. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to commend the maker of the statement and associate myself with the concerns that he has raised. I'm particularly interested in the loss of cocoa due to pests and diseases. And he gives the statistics as that between 30 to 40 percent of cocoa production is lost because of pests and diseases. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the production levels in 2017, it suggests that we are losing some 245,000 tons of cocoa that we produce due to pests and diseases. And if you put that on top of the 2017 production, for example, potentially we should have been producing some 985,000 tons of cocoa, which is approximately 1 million uh, tons of cocoa. Mr. Speaker, this loss is unfortunate and it should draw our attention to looking seriously into the entomology of cocoa research. And it feeds into our commitment 
to commit substantial resources to science and technology development in this country. Mr. Speaker, we are committed as a country to use at least 1% of our GDP to support science and technology development in this country. So far, we have been doing uh, something around 0.35%. And so we need to pay more attention to science and technology, particularly in this context, paying attention to the study of diseases and pests in the cocoa uh, sector. Just we are on top of that, perhaps we should also be looking at the problem of science policy linkage in this country. There's a huge gap between science and policy. If you go to our universities and our research centers, a lot of work has been done on several subjects. Technologies have been developed, and all these are locked up in libraries, just gathering dust. I think it's about time we took this issue more seriously and work towards bringing all the knowledge that we have generated in our research institutes. And fortunately, as a country, we have the Cocoa Research Institute of Ghana. And I believe when you go to their library, you may find that a lot of work has been done on cocoa pests and diseases. But who is taking uh, this output up in terms of translating them into uh, policy and primary practice? And so um, this statement should remind us and perhaps uh, urge us, particularly our committee responsible for cocoa affairs, to try to work hard and make sure that the ministry and maybe the cocoa research attempt to put in interventions that will help us reduce the loss of cocoa from the current average of 35% to probably uh, uh, something more uh, appreciable. With this few statement, I would like to uh, thank the maker of the statement, Mr. Speaker, and also uh, associate myself with his concerns. Thank you very much. Honorable member for SCTV.